All right, you're looking to generate a little bit more income from your portfolio. Have you thought about MLPs or Master Limited Partnerships? Well, here to talk about that with us is Ryan Giannato, the Director of Research of Granite Shares. Ryan, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to talk. Pleasure. So you recently wrote an article for Retirement Daily about this topic. We're eager to have you walk us through what you wrote. Exactly. Yes. And as you said, it's very difficult to generate or increase your income in this you know, sort of yield environment. Wherever you look with conventional strategies, you're seeing historically low yields, whether through bonds, treasuries, uh, or dividend stocks. Wherever you look, you're not seeing the yield potential that investors have been accustomed to uh, through past environments, past decades. So what we're really looking to see is if are there asset classes that can be used in a broader portfolio to increase overall yields? And MLPs, Master Limited Partnerships, are one way to do this. Right. So what are they exactly? Perfect. It's a great question. <laughs> it's, it's a bit of an unusual structure. They are what we call pass-through securities, meaning that not only do all the income they produce, substantially all of this income has to be passed on to end investors. It's in this way, it's, it's very much an income pipeline, which is a bit of an irony because many MLPs focus on the oil and gas pipeline business. But also there is corporate tax. Uh, they, they don't have to pay corporate taxes. And this is a one, two benefit for end investors. And this is true of all pass through securities, this, you know, sort of transference of, economic earnings direct to the end investor, but MLPs have a number of different techniques that can really augment these tax benefits even further. And this is what really brings the asset class into its own. Right, so uh, you talked about uh, the tax benefits. I guess, well, let, first, before we talk about the tax benefits, uh, let's talk a little bit about how someone might use the MLP in their portfolio. Perfect, yes, yes. So MLPs are, they're effectively partnerships that are allowed to be traded on an exchange. And what this does is it provides the corporate protections uh, for the entity that you know, a standard you know, corporation would, would enjoy, but also has the pass-through benefits that a partnership enjoys. So it's this happy marriage for end investors. So many MLPs fo focus in the oil and gas business. And while this may concern some investors up front about you know, what is my exposure, to the oil price, oil market, to the energy sector. They know it's been you know, under pressure for you know, really you know, probably the last five or six years, and especially over the last year. The real thing with MLP is, MLPs are is that they focus primarily on oil distribution, oil storage, and to some extent, oil uh, refining. So these, uh, these activities are less sensitive to the price of oil. In fact, you're only picking up about 14% of your risk from the oil price itself. Uh, so as a yield focused product, it's not as energy sensitive as might be commonly supposed. Hmm. So uh, you talk about the yields. What can investors expect in terms of uh, the yield reward? And can you talk a little bit about also about the risk that they might face when they think about adding MLPs to their portfolio? Perfect. Yes. So the yields for MLPs currently as of the end of 2000, uh, 2020, it was about 11.2%, which is very, very sizable. I mean, this certainly perks the interest of many you know, investors out there. You know, how is a yield like this even possible? And uh, second off, it's, um, the, as for the risks, yes, they were definitely impacted in 2020, but they've recovered uh, very nicely. Uh, and their recovery, you know, very much coincided with the recovery of many small cap, uh, smaller financial firms with less, ask, with less uh, accessibility to, uh, you know, financial liquidity uh, during this tumultuous period. It was less about being in the energy space and more about just being small, a small company with less access to, you know, sort of unlimited financial resources that larger corporations could muster during this period of distress especially since the vaccine, these uh, assets have rebounded. That said, they are relatively risky as far as income assets go. They are more on par with the risk of the stock market overall in terms of overall volatility, but there are a different set of risks and blended as part of a overall portfolio, maybe about five, 10%, they can substantially increase uh, you know, overall yields. You know, we talk, mentioned that 11% uh, distribution rate that we're talking about, but is it's a different set of risks and can help moderate overall portfolio volatility. Right. So uh, you mentioned taxes. 
Uh, what do investors need to know about where they place these assets, whether it should be in their taxable account versus their retirement account? Perfect. So MLPs enjoy their full benefit in the you know, taxable account because they're able to pass on so many tax benefits uh, you know, along to the end investor. I mean, they can be, I would not recommend their use in uh, retirement accounts simply because you're not enjoying the full benefits of the asset class. If you have a choice, taxable investments, uh, taxable accounts are much more better suited for MLPs because this is really where MLPs stand out. They can pass on asset depreciation from their pipeline investments onto the end investor. And this can really reduce the tax burden. You know, historically about 70 to 80% of MLP distributions are not subject to income tax or what's called return on capital. And this is really the sleight of hand MLPs can perform. They can take, you know, sort of corporate cash flows, distribute them in their entirety almost to end investors, and then classify them as return on capital. And they're not subject to any sort of tax until the asset is sold. And that's a very, very powerful because all this income can be going straight to an investor without the tax man, you know, sort of playing interference. And that's obviously very desirable. Very, very. So uh, anything that we haven't touched upon that you'd like to mention before we wrap up? Yes, accessing uh, MLPs. This can be a bit of a tricky situation because uh, as partnerships, they issue what's called a K-1. And this is an additional tax form. It comes late in the season, you know, generally like February, March. So this can be uh, just another thing to mention, another thing to be cognizant of. Some, M, uh, some ETFs can access MLPs without uh, the K-1 exposure, and that's definitely an added benefit. Right. All right, Ryan, I want to thank you, uh, as always, for sharing your knowledge and wisdom about these topics with us. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure our readers and viewers greatly appreciate it. No problem. Thank you very much, Robert.